Hello friends, Jennifer Pearson here, Thistle Gypsy. And I'm ready to do my Tarot of Transformation deck interview. And I have shuffles. I'm ready with the book because it is a very different deck and so we'll see. Uh, I will probably have to consult the guidebook. So first question, what are you here to teach people? And so we have holding the vision, holding the vision. So I assume that means persisting in the vision. It's like a dragon. Five of Swords. So we have an archer. And it looks like a dragon there. So it has a very Sagittarian feel to it. Let's take a look. You might be able to hear some annoying fireworks going off in the background. I hope not. But you might be able to hear them popping back there. Okay. This this deck does not does not skimp on um, the guidebook here on the miners. All right, so it says, in many decks, the Five of Swords represents defeat and defeatist thinking. I don't know that I would agree with that, but anyway, our card uses this as a foundation, but also looks at the flip side, which is what helps us successfully battle defeatist thinking. Like the warrior in the image, we must aim at something beyond the dragon and hold to that vision. Okay, well, I get that. Um, you know, in other words, not let an immediate threat or an immediate battle, an immediate, perhaps a failure to the immediate, in an immediate um, battle, keep us from persisting. The five-pointed star has often been used as a symbol of excellence and power and for warding, warding off evil. It means all of these things here, as well as representing a higher truth. It is the higher truth we must hold to, even when we can't immediately contact it in the moment. Being in the suit of swords, this card focuses, focuses on the demons of the mental realm. Doubt, confusion, pessimism, and defeatist thinking. So I take this in this position, what are you here to teach people, um, is to persist in your vision, to not give up. So that's beautiful. That's a beautiful message. Um, question number two, how would you describe yourself? Transmitter of light. <laughs> Transmitter of light. I'll put it up close here. That makes, that makes sense. It has a high opinion of itself. It always amuses me when decks kind of have a high opinion of themselves. This is called the Server of Wands. So let's take a look at the Server of Wands. Oh, and I turned it right to it. The Server cards are about helping. So this is describing itself. This card is a reminder that we not only assist each other physically, emotionally, and ment mentally, but we can also assist each other spiritually. This is primarily a matter of the consciousness we cultivate. By being in our light, this supports others' light and helps raise the overall vibration. It is another way of mis ministering to the planet. So, it's a beacon of light. Okay. Um, next, what is your opinion of me? Oh, natural intimacy. <laughs> okay, natural intimacy. So this is the card of sexuality here with the pan and this woman who appears to have her hand in her crotch. Five of cups. Still a beautiful card. 
I like the purples. So let's take a look. It's kind of funny, especially... Now I would say, as far as intimacy is concerned, I lean toward the natural, but um, it's amusing because that part of my life has just sort of... Sexu sexuality has just sort of been cut off. Uh, just, uh, it's just hormones. So that's my natural intimacy. The hormones are saying naturally, we're just not, we're not excited. We're not excited or excitable. We, um, we call this card natural intimacy because of its sense of comfortable sexuality and the ease with which various energies circulate. The woman in the image is unselfconsciously naked unselfconsciously naked and in natural intimacy with the world around her. Her male counterparts are the stag, and a sim which is a symbol of virile male energy and, and the nature god Pan, who embodies an earthy sensuality. Well, my one opportunity for kind of intimacy in the physical sense, is a very pan-like sort of guy, <laughs> so maybe that's, not that I've had anything to do with him, because my own physical body is just sort of, blah, not, not terribly interested. Um, but fair enough, I wouldn't, you know, I won't contradict it, but I would entirely, but, um, at other times in my life, <laughs> more so than now. And I would say that in in the sense that, you know, that this woman, you know, is just naked in the environment, I would have to say that in that, like in a wandering, you know, I'm not inclined to wander my yard without any clothing on or, or that sort of thing. But, you know, and some people are, and I have no problem with that, but that's not where I go. That's not my I would say that the way that I my natural intimacy is just that it's natural for me I do whatever is natural for me um, all right how can I best learn from or collaborate with this deck oh this is lovely sharing support sharing support so um, I see that as um, this deck kind of supporting me in my mission to help others. And it could mean um, how best to collaborate. It could mean also maybe using other decks with it, which I could definitely see that with this deck. It has actually more of an oracle e or oracle-ish feel to it. So, um, and that would be the next. So, although I shuffled it and I shuffled it, we have some, this is the Six of Cups, and the previous one was the Five of Cups. Um, in many decks, the Six of Cups signifies emotional pleasure, a flow of energy that is expansive and free. It's usually the card of nostalgia or kind of innocent sharing. We take this as the ideal and look at how it is blocked. In particular, we consider the character strategy called Burdened Enduring. This is the strategy of soldiering through, enduring the tough times, rather than make a serious effort to try to change things. It is just trying to keep up, hoping things will get better. Um, so this is how can I best collaborate with this deck is I guess to not do that um, okay so it says there are several ways to begin releasing this pattern you can stop adapting to situations that aren't healthy for you by saying things like I can have I can have more than this or I don't have to put up with this you can quit taking responsibility for others and stop taking on the weight of the world. You can have fun. Um, 
when you get this card in a reading, ask yourself if there is a situation you are enduring. So how can I best work with this deck or collaborate with this deck is to let go of enduring and accept support. Which again, to me, accepting support in this context would be, um, you know, pulling from other decks as well. Or maybe this is the deck I will use to elaborate on um, other readings. All right, strengths as a deck. Oh, two of cups. And I was wondering if this might be a good deck to use for love or relationship readings. So this is authentic connection. Two of cups. So we're still in the cups. Okay, this card symbolizes two coming together in loving connection. So it's what we would expect. The capacity to come together in authentic and loving relationship rests on a much earlier foundation. I was going to go into all kinds of psychology about bonding, early bonding. Um, but in any case, it sees a strength um, in helping people come together and see past their differences. So kind of a, a healing deck in terms of relationships. Okay, so what are weaknesses or limitations as a deck? And here it says no self. Ten of Wands, they're calling it No Self. And I assume that this is some sort of spiritual idealization, Buddhist in nature. Um, and that's the Ten of Wands. So this would kind of be saying that the strength is kind of coming in from a heart space and that the weakness here is kind of in the mental realm. The Ten of Swords, no, this is Ten of Wands, uh-oh. Let me make sure that we don't have a glitch in the guidebook. Where's the Ten? Okay, no. Okay. It's just going to go through all of the tens. It says the Ten of Swords symbolizes leaving habitual mental patterns behind. The Ten of Cups reflects leaving defensive strategies. And the Ten of Wands signifies leaving behind our usual identity and ego activity. It is the experience of no self, an experience that ultimately helps loosen the old identity and move us along in our experience of self-realization. No self is what is left when the usual sense of personal self is devolved, dissolved. Uh, once you've felt this more radical state of freedom, you can never fall back quite as far into believing your story and the identity that goes with it. Um, one teacher described it this way, no self is empty space, immaculate and pure, emptied of everything structured by mind. And I could see how that it would be difficult for a deck of tarot cards to be no self, because you're coming here with questions sort of as a self. <laughs> you're not in a no self state of mind, I think, when you come to a tarot deck. Um, Okay, what is the potential outcome of our time together or of my working with this deck? Back to sex. Tantric sexuality. Isn't this interesting? I don't know how I can get tantric, se tantric sexuality out of a deck of cards, but here we go. And again, although I shuffled, this is the card before this card. This is the card before the previous card. The other one was the Ten of Wands. This is the Nine of Wands. But let's take a look. 
Number nine traditionally symbolizes completion or mastery. In this card, we explore coming into a level of mastery with our sexual energy. Specifically, this card represents integrating this energy with transformed consciousness. In Tantra, or Tantra, however you say it, we bring the skills we have learned in meditation and other awareness practices into the love-making arena, be it with yourself or with a partner. The point of many meditation practices to, is to come fully into the present. When this principle is applied to lovemaking, you approach the beloved without having as a goal any particular kind of experience. This creates a space of true meeting. So it goes further into that. Um, and I could see, you know, the whole Kundalini rising, you know, maybe better physical health. I think I would not necessarily take the sexuality out of it, but again, have an expanded notion of sexuality. So it's, uh, so maybe it will be helpful somehow in grounding me in the physical and in pleasure. Um, maybe it will give me messages in that regard. Okay. Certainly it's visually very pleasurable. What is one thing you ask of me? And here we have the first major. And that is Master of Conscious Creation, the Magician. So, let's wander that way in the book. The magician represents the power of conscious creation, the ability to manifest or create what you want. So this is one thing that is being asked of me. In many decks, the magician represent, is represented by the figure of a magician, although the mother piece depicts it as the shaman, the one who knows the secret of changing things from one form into another. How you hold this power is important. Using your will and creative powers to manipulate others is a distortion of this energy, sometimes referred to as black magic. Although in many ways, the magician represents the masculine pull of being able to initiate and go after things to cultivate results, in the Tarot of Transformation, this figure is more androgynous. What makes him a master in the visible realms is that he knows how to harness the energies of the invisible. These include the deliberate use of thought and feeling, but also subtler realms. The ing to be born in you, ing as an ing. It may be a book, a song, a work of art, or it may be a new direction in your work or the way you have been living. So I can see that this might be it might be asking of me to um, be flexible and inventive in the way that I use this deck because it's not a traditional deck. Um, what kind of readings does this deck enjoy most? And here we have Master of Wands, Temple of the Goddess. So, getting back to the end where the wands are. Um, this card is about spirit manifesting through form. Here, spirit has become completely accessible. The form, symbolized by the temple, is the body and also our lives. When we are conscious of the body, of the body as the temple. It is no longer just a body, but a vehicle for spirit that can become illumined, filled with the light of pure consciousness and love. And yet it is still a body in the world. 
This card is called the Temple of the Goddess because it is the feminine aspect that represents and holds the energy of embodiment. Huh. So it's almost as though this deck prefers readings that have to do with the body or connecting the body to you know your spiritual mission or maybe looking at one's body in a more spiritual way and experiencing it with a tantric sexuality experiencing it your body in a more spiritual way so very interesting um and interesting because you know i have at times started to sort of tiptoe <laughs> into the area of um kind of providing sexual advice or not advice but um, suggestions even though I don't have any of the overtly sexual decks um, I have decks that to me are sexually suggestive or could potentially be sexually suggestive and I've thought about doing those kinds of readings I don't think it hurts I think it's fun I think it's I think it's natural intimacy, <laughs> so um, I may, you know, maybe this deck wants to participate in that sort of thing. I've never, I haven't kind of gone all the way, so to speak, in in that endeavor. Maybe this is a nudge in that direction, I don't know. Um, and the last question, how will this deck challenge me? Hmm, mental detour. This is the Nine of Cups. So I've got a lot of cups and wands here. And so this is interesting. So I'm not sure if it's saying that it will put me in my head or if it will help me get out of my head. clearly a deck I need to um, explore before using yet another one. I'm just looking at my nines. So I had the nine of wands and I have the nine of cups and I have two fives in this reading. I'm holding the visual the vision and natural intimacy. Only one major. Okay, Nine of Cups. One of the traditional meanings given this card is free-flowing feeling. So the Nine of Cups is traditionally also called the um, wish card. And I can see the free, flow, free flowing feeling in the sense that I think of it as a, excuse me, the kind of the wedding reception card or the, the drinks are on me card where you're just feeling so good that you just want to share what you have with everyone else. But here they're going to, they're really taking a different tack, I guess, in the cups. In this deck, so it says, it says, since we have been looking at defensive strategies in the suit of cups, which is interesting, that the suit of cups would be defensive strategies. Um, so this is a very psychological deck. We use this card to represent the cutting off from feelings that accompanies the defense of intellectualizing. So how will you ch challenge me? So maybe it will challenge challenging me to get out of my head. Um, those who intellectualize can sometimes talk a good game, even being quite articulate about emotions. They just don't feel them. Well, that's not fair. Um, when relying heavily on this strategy, you become a talking head cut off 
not just from emotions, but the rest of your body. The intellect becomes your only organ of perception. So again, we're back to the body. So I'm going to be very curious to read this book and see where it's coming from. And so I will eventually, with this challenge of the mental detour, <laughs> could be very accurate, in that if... Um, If the deck, if the creator of the deck, you know, it being very psychological, you know, and kind of going actually intellectually, being very intellectual in that regard, heading off into a direction that I'm not familiar with or don't feel comfortable representing, um, then I may have to step back from the meanings of the cards here and instead use the wonderful images to create my own responses to them. Which I was hoping not to do that because I have too many decks to kind of, that I'm kind of doing that with. But, but I will try at first certainly to be, um, to meet it where it's at, to meet this deck where it's at to enjoy it where it's at, um, and see how it works, see how it works, and, you know, I'm very curious about the, the focus on the body, you know, and, and like I said, and with all these sexuality cues that are coming my way in this thing, if it can be used in this interview, if it can be used kind of as, I don't know, in real, more, I don't know if you'd say sexually attuned or physically attuned relationship readings, um, we'll see, we'll see, there it is though. Care of Transformation, deck interview with me. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.